Alright, so here are the next set of problems, and we're solving them the same way we're solving on the interval of theta being between 0 and 2 pi. Um, okay, so some tips, some pointers with these problems. Um, first is that if you're working in tangent, you should convert it to sine over cosine. Um, it's best that when you solve these problems that you always have sine and cosine or you just have sine or you just have cosine okay so that's my tip for these particular problems so tangent theta should be sine over cosine so you want to do sine theta over cosine theta um, the rest just stays as is right now Okay, so now, um, now what we want to do is, again, we want to stay with sine and cosine. So what I'm going to do is um, try to solve this. Um, so the best way to do this is eventually bring everything over to one side and try to factor and solve it at some point. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by cosine theta. Um, that'll cancel out on this side. So, cosine theta. Okay, so this cancels, right? So we have sine theta. I don't know why this happens sometimes, but these things keep disappearing. It's probably my pen. Um, and then over here, it would just be a repeat of what we already have. So minus 2 square root of 3 over 3, sine theta times cosine theta. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, so now what we're going to do is bring everything over to that side, and we're going to factor and solve. Um, so a lot of times you're going to be factoring in these problems, or you'll be using substitution u substitution. Um, I'll show you how to do that in the next couple problems. Um, so those are the main ways that you're going to be solving these problems. Whoops, I wrote that incorrectly. This should be 3. I'm adding it to the other side, so that's why it's not negative anymore. I'm sure you already figured that out. Alright, so now this side is zero. Um, okay, so now we have two terms here. We have this term, which is just sine theta, and we have this term, which is uh, 2 squared to 3 over 3 sine theta times cosine theta. So what do they have in common? They have sine in common. So you're going to factor that out. So sine theta is going to be factored out. You're going to be multiplying it by this whole thing. So if you factor out a sine theta out of here, you're only left with 1. If you factor a sine theta out of here, you're left with 2 square root of 3 over 3 times cosine of theta. Okay, so now we can use the zero product property again. So either this has to be zero or that has to be zero. So we're going to say sine theta when is sine theta equal to zero? That's what we need to find out. And then we need to find out when is all this term equal to zero too. So figuring out where sine is equal to zero is easy. You just go right to your unit circle. And sine is, remember, the y coordinate. So where sine is zero, sine is zero right here at 2 pi. Sine is 0 right here at pi. And that would be it. Now, uh, remember that it says uh, our interval is that theta is greater than or equal to 0, but less than 2 pi. So that means we can't use 2 pi, and we have to use 0 degrees instead, or just point 0. So 0 and pi should be our first answers for that particular <coughs> side. 
so this should be 0 and pi. Okay? Over here, you got to solve this, so it takes a couple minutes, but um, just really quickly, you're going to subtract 1 over to the other side. Let me put this up a little bit. Subtract 1 over to the other side, so you got 2 squared of 3 over 3 cosine theta equals negative 1. Um, and then you're going to multiply by the reciprocal. Um, this gets a little hairy, but not too bad. Um, all right, so let's that that'll cancel. Clearly, this will cancel, and then you got to multiply the other side by the same thing. So three divided by two squared of three. Remember, you're multiplying here. Sorry, I didn't have enough room. So we have cosine theta is equal to negative one times three is negative three all over two squared of three. Again, we have to rationalize, so we have to rationalize this denominator, so we got to multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. Alright, so now what do we have when all is said and done? Cosine theta is equal to negative 3 square root of 3 divided by, so the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. And then you've got to reduce this here. So this is a lot. So let me write it over here. Cosine, I'm running out of room. Cosine theta is equal to, reducing this would be, square root of 3 over 2. So the negative square root of 3 over 2. So negative square root of 3 over 2, we have to find when cosine is negative 3 over square root of 2. So right here would be one instance. Let me use a different color. So here's cosine negative square root of 3 over 2 and negative square root of 3 over 2. That's 5 pi over 6. And that would be it. So 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. So those would be our other two answers. So 5 pi over 6 and I think it was 7 pi over 6. How easily I forget. Um, so these should be your four answers for that particular problem. Alright, so the next problem is a little bit trickier. And let me just say a couple of tips before we, uh, before I stop this video and move on to the other one. Um, so a couple tips is anytime you see cosine squared theta or sine squared theta, you must think of your identity which would be sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. This identity you must know at all times and you must know how to solve for each part of it. Um, so for example cosine squared theta is equal to, and you would just subtract sine squared theta from both sides. Okay, so when you do that, this cancels, right? And you're left with cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. Okay, so now what you would do is replace cosine squared theta with 1 minus sine squared theta. That will work in almost every single incident. Unless you already have like a sine here and a sine there, then you wouldn't have to do that. But in this situation we have a sine and a cosine. We want them to be in the same trigonometric function. So therefore we have to convert this using the identity. Okay, I'm going to stop. We're going to come back to this problem in a few minutes.